Greetings again from Pastor George from beautiful Jetwin, British Columbia. Wow, really warm here today. In fact, it's in his low 30s, and because of that, I'm dressed rather casually and rather cool. And uh, just trust that as we share together today in a very simple meditation, that the Lord will bless your heart. Amen. I, I want to talk just for a few moments about a very simple subject, attending church. And now with the COVID kind of in the past or partially in the past, we have to think again about coming back to our church buildings and uh, meetings so that we might worship and praise the, the living Christ. I read a Bible verse in Hebrews, and I want to read it first of all from the New International Version in Hebrews chapter 9, and the author says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And the Living Bible puts it this way, let us not forget our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of His coming back again is drawing very near. It was a Sunday morning, and uh, the husband and wife were having a little discussion about going to church. And the husband said to his wife, you know, I really don't feel like going to church today. In fact, I don't want to go to church today. And, and his wife said, but honey, you got to go. He, he says, no, no, I just don't feel like going. And she says, well, why? Why aren't you interested in going to church? He says, well, you know, the singing, it, it, it's all right, but it's, it's not fantastic. And uh, when people come, they talk about their problems and they share their problems. And, and the preaching, I'm having a real difficult time getting used to the preaching. Now, sweetheart, you tell me why I should go to church today. And his wife responded and said to him, you ought to go to church today because after all, man, you are the pastor. And sometimes we come up with all kinds of excuses as to why we're not going to attend church. And being a pastor for many, many years, I've heard these kinds of excuses or reasons why I'm not going to go to church. I, I, I feel it's too much of an obligation, and, and I don't want to live under the umbrella of obligation as a motivation to go to church. Others will respond by saying, there's too much pressure. I, I work in an office. Um, I work in an environment where I'm the only Christian. And, and if people know that I'm going to be going to church, then there's going to be some pressure from my inmates or my fellow workers uh, or my friends, like, why would you go to church? And I don't want to be put under that kind of pressure. And, and some have said, well, it's just a tradition. You know, I, I, I'm just not in favor of traditions. And so I'm really not 100% convinced that church is a good thing. On the other hand, I've had folks say to me, you know, I, I really enjoy going to church. And if you ask them the reason why, they will say, well, it's an opportunity to worship, an opportunity to worship our God. Some would suggest it's an encouragement. Sometimes you have a difficult week or difficult situations, and when you gather for worship and talk to your fellow Christians and your friends, I always find encouragement. Fellowship is to be found in our place of worship. And because of that, I feel a compulsion to go for fellowship. And others will say it's an opportunity to get to know God. Others will say, for me personally, it's a sense of commitment. Or some will say, I actually need people in my life. And when I go to church, I find people who are a part of my life and I enjoy that fellowship. And so in Hebrews, when the author talks about let us not forsake our church meetings, he is talking about a building. He's talking about the synagogue or any place where people will gather. You see, the word to describe the church of flesh and blood, like people, comes from the Greek word ecclesia. 
And it means men and women who are called out of the world and into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the author is saying that as the body of Christ, as the ecclesia, it's important that we gather together in a common place, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And so one translation says, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the church is flesh and blood, not brick and mortar, rules and regulations, do's or don'ts. And while the church, the ecclesia, is flesh and blood, the church attends a building of brick and mortar. And we call that building a church. It's interesting that the church, the ecclesia, gathers in a church building. So what are some of the reasons that we would attend church? Why would we be interested as a born-again Christian? Number one, we go to church so that we can hear from the Word of God. That is so important. Uh, in, in Hebrews it says, For the Word of God is alive and is powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit. If then the Word is what the Word says it is, if the Word is what the Word says it is, then hearing the preaching and the teaching of the Word is vital to our well-being. Christians, we are, including me as a pastor, we are sometimes so busy in our private lives, in our public life, in our professional life, that valuable moments of hearing the Word of God can be lost if we fail to assemble ourselves as the church, the ecclesia, in a church building or some other facility. That's not necessarily a church building, but a place where we gather, where we gather for worship. Coming to church and hearing the word being preached and being taught helps us understand it better. And we appreciate as we sit and listen to the pastor, uh, a preacher, a man of God, sharing with us the insights that God has given him. And thus we hear from the word of God. The psalmist said on one occasion, and uh, it's, it's an interesting verse in Psalm 119 and verse 11. He said, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And hearing from the word teaches us how we might hide that word in our heart so that we can have a constant, healthy fellowship and a relationship with God. Not only would we go to church to hear from the Word of God, but we go to church to hear from the God of the Word. The white noise in our lives will sometimes distort a lot of stuff. And sometimes when God is speaking into our mind, into our heart, and into our spirit, we fail to hear because of the white noise and the many things that we are caught up in. But going to church or a place of worship will help facilitate us hearing from the God of the Word, letting God speak into your spirit. The Bible says, this Word says, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. And so getting into the Word, listening to it being taught, listening to it being preached, we hear the voice, we hear God as He speaks into our spirit and he encourages us as Christians to continue in our fellowship and our relationship with him. Question, 
But, but I can't, or not a question, but a statement. Some may say, but Pastor George, I can hear from the Word of God, and I can hear from the God of the Word through other outlets, for instance, social media, videos, CDs, televangelists. These all enable me to hear from the Word of God and from the God of the Word. And that's true, and I wouldn't question that. But there is another reason for attending church. Of course, there are many reasons, and I'll give you just a third one. We attend church to enjoy a commitment of other believers or a community of other believers. It is so important with the functionality of the church that as believers in Christ, we gather together once a week, twice a week, three times a week. And when we gather together, we hear from the Word of God and we hear from the God of the Word. One of the core values of our church here, the Chapman Gospel Tabernacle, is relationships. So important as we worship on Sundays and during the week. But you cannot, we cannot build relationships in isolation. There has to be a coming together so that the community of believers is an encouragement to each other. After a long week, after arduous experiences, after disappointments in life, after a taxing work week, we want to come and relax and be in fellowship and relationships, and the church can do that. It's not about who is better than who. It's about having fellowship into a relationship and maintaining that constant relationship with God our Father. In fact, the, the community of believers is actually a commandment from the Word. And I want to read it again. Let us not forget our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage, amen, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of His coming back again is drawing near. The early church was a community of believers that heard from the Word of God and heard from the God of the Word. They came together on a regular basis to learn, to encourage, to share food, to worship, and to enjoy the goodwill of all the people. You see, this sense of community is so well defined in Acts chapter 2. And, and Luke, the author of Acts, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says this of the early church. And all the believers met together constantly and shared everything with each other, selling their possessions and dividing with those in need. They worshiped together regularly at the temple each day, met in small groups for communion, shared their meals with great joy and thanksgiving, praising God. And the whole city was favorable to them, and each day God added to them all who were being saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you can think of many reasons to attend church. Three of them would be to hear from the Word of God, to hear the God of the Word, and to fellowship and commune together. As we look forward to Sunday, I just pray that we will be found in God's house. God bless you. Let me pray with you. Father God, I pray that all who are listening today will take it upon themselves, the, the importance of attending and fellowshipping together in the name of Jesus. We pray it. Amen and amen. Blessings to you all.